What's up, guys? Welcome back to Pound for Pound House. UFC 303 is right around the corner, a couple days away. I'm going to talk about the card, or at least the fights that I'm going to be watching closely. Um, so I'm going to break those fights down, give my thoughts on who's the, you know, who might be the winners or how this fight might go. And let's just jump into it. Boy, aren't those some mean looking motherfuckers on this screen. Oh, wow. This is going to be a good card. I mean, with all the shit that's been going on with this card and the fact that it's been switched, you know, from Jamal Hill and uh, all the shit that's been happening with this. It's, it's crazy. You know, with just the last minute switch with Anthony Smith. Listen, this card is pretty stacked for a card that's been switched around so much. I think this card is still going to be a serious banger. It's definitely a solid 8.5 card. Solid 8.5. All right. So, there's some fights that I'm just, you know, not going to talk too much about, but just interesting to see that they're here. Uh, Ricky Simone, I know he lost his last fight to, I believe it was Batista, right? Yep. And, um, yeah, he's coming off a loss. He's a betting favorite. Um, I think Oliveira won his last, yep. So, you know, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how this fight plays out. But um, I, I can go with the betting odds on this one. Um, Andre. Damn. Andre's this is a vet. You know, a vet who's been fighting for long enough. I think it's time to hang up the gloves. Gloves, Andre. Um, you know, three losses in a row. That's ah, rough, man. I mean, maybe he makes it back from this fight, but where does he really go, you know? He's 40-something years old, you know, it's rough, it's rough. He's, he's been, he's, look at his record, 34 and 23, jeez, guys, he has an insane record. He's been in the game long enough, I think it's time to hang up the gloves, so. Whether he wins or loses in this, I think he should hang it up. I think it's, it's, you know, he's gave us some amazing fights. But, you know, everybody has to hang it up one day. So, yeah. I'm going to go with Andre just to say, you know, just for Andre. Hopefully he gets his last win, you know. But, we don't know. We never know. Uh, Michelle Waterson and Jillian Robertson. Now, this is interesting because Michelle's actually on a four-fight losing streak. And I believe Jillian lost her last fight. Well, she won her last fight against Pollyanna Vienna. And um, she lost the fight before that. This is also an interesting fight. Interesting, you know... It's an interesting fight because the fact that Michelle Waterson is on four, a four-fight losing streak... Um, she needs this one. She needs to, you know, pull this one out of the hat and get the W because five in a row. Uh, I mean, I know the UFC loves her, but this could be the grounds for cutting her. I don't even know. I don't know if this is her last fight on a contract or not, but yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's a lot of losses. It's going to be rough to, you know, it's going to be a long hike back to the top so if she is trying to make the run for it so we'll see but she needs this win she needs this win so for that reason i think she's gonna do something different this time around i think she gets the win it's gonna be a tough tough fight but she probably pulls out a decision in this one that's what i think so going against the odds all right um Peyton, undefeated kid, fighting against Giannis, a French guy who's, I think, had one fight before, which he lost, did a TKO. So, <sighs> Peyton's just a, he's just a rising star right now. So, we'll see how that plays out. But, you know, minus 1,600. Listen, if somebody's looking to make some fucking money on this K. Drutolo looking mother lover, um, bet on Giannis. You never know, man. The shit. Minus 1,600, dude. 
know, the payout on that, that's nuts. So, I don't think he's going to lose, but shit. You know, just if you bet five or ten bucks or 50 bucks or whatever you're, you're willing to spend, yeah, you, you make a nice little a little change. So, why not? But, um, Peyton's likely going to win this. Um, this, Giannis had lost, I think, for T from TKOs previously. So, this... I can imagine this is going to go similarly to the same way. Or it could, you know, go into later rounds, maybe a submission, but I, don't, I doubt that. It's probably going to be a TKO. So, yeah, Peyton for the TKO. Charles Jordan. Man, he's always a fun fight to watch. Uh, he's a fun character. He's a, he's, he's an exciting fighter. He's just crazy. He's nuts. Like He just has this interesting style of fighting. He's just... It's different. So it's going to be interesting. I think Gene Silva, there was yeah, like one fight in the UFC. Matter of fact, it might even be his debut. I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, one fight in the UFC where he won. So we'll see. Charles Jordan is, is the real deal too. So he's got he's fought some big names. But let's see how this plays out. But yeah, I, I'd probably go with the Betty Favors in this one too. Charles Jordan with the win. Probably by... Probably by, could be a submission actually. Because I feel like this fight's going to go to the ground. We're looking at it. I mean, Charles Jordan, Jordan is not going to really take him down, maybe, but Gene Silva might. So yeah, I'd say that this is going to go, could stay on striking, but TKO, most likely, Charles Jordan. That's my pick. He's a, uh, it's going to be a fun fight, I feel like. So keep an eye on this fight. It's going to be fun. Ooh, the vets. The vets. Cobb Swanson and Andre Feely. I mean, these guys fought everybody. Andre lost to Dan Ige in his last. And Cobb Swanson won. You know what? I didn't I don't remember exactly who he won. Oh, yeah. That would do. I do remember this now pull out that decision um you know this is going to be a fun fight itself in itself they're both sluggers they're both going to go for it i mean i actually think cup swanson wins this i don't think andre philly wins this i feel like cup swanson is just more well-rounded and from a strike perspective he's definitely i think a better i feel like he's a better striker maybe um so and I don't know if they're going to really go for the grappling exchange. I don't know. I think they're going to keep it standing. These guys are just vets. They're just going to dog it out. And that's it. Um, so I would say Cub Swanson. I bet against the odds here. I definitely go for Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson, you know, just seems right. Seems right for the money line. So Cub Swanson. All right, Joe Pfeiffer and Mark Andre Berriot. So they both lost their last two fights. Uh, I think Mark lost his fight against. Um, um, shit, I just had his name, but can't remember right off the top of my head. I believe it was. Chris Curtis, yes. So Chris Curtis is the, his last loss, but that was actually, and now I remember this fight, that fight was very close. It was a split decision loss. Um, it's a really close fight, um, but it was a good fight. That fight was really, really good, and, you know, hey, they didn't need, a lot of people didn't need, I don't even know if a lot of people expected that from him or didn't expect that fight to go that way he did. Um, Joe Pfeiffer, complete opposite. Everybody thought Joe Pfeiffer was going to beat um, Jack Hermanson, but, Shit, did were we all wrong? Because even I was like, yo, this, this guy's gonna walk through him, but guess not. Uh, you know, he learned a valuable lesson that day, and uh, you know, let's see how he comes out this time around against Mark. This fight is, you know, I mean, I think it's dead smack in the middle. I don't, I don't know why they're giving, I mean, they give Joe Five for the, the minus 265. I don't think. You know, looking at the last performance, unless he's made some really major adjustments, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be this 
that that you know like one sided as everybody thinks it is, or the one sided as, as the odds think it is. I think this is actually going to be a sleeper fight that I think we should all focus on, and we should probably be watching this one because this one this fight is going to be a banger. Um, I feel it. I feel like it is. These guys are pretty identical in height and reach, so I don't know. This this fight is a sleeper fight in my opinion. It's going to be a banger ass fight. Uh, I'm excited for this fight, actually. So, um, if I had to go with somebody, I guess I would just go with Joe Pfeiffer. I mean, but this could go either way. I think it's going to be a decision. I think it goes all the way. I don't know if it even, I mean, I feel like it goes all the way. They're just so tough, these guys. But this is going to be a fun fight. So, keep an eye out for this one. All right. <laughs> Ian Gary and Michael Venom Page. All right. So I actually wanted to make a whole video on this fight, but we're not going to do that. <sighs> Ian Gary's obviously been an interesting fighter. He lost. I mean, he, he won his last fight. Um, and it's and it was close. It was close. You know, um, Jeff Neal was, you know, Put it on him, and you know he made him work for that for that win. It was a split. Obviously, he won against e, um, Neil Magny, and he won against um, uh, what's his name, Rodriguez, and for, I guess D Rod, who just fought last week. Um, you know he's he's been he's been on a hot streak. He's he's obviously a very good fighter. He's had some you know shit runs in the media. Unfortunately, he is. Uh, He's very dynamic. He's long. He's lanky. He's just the same height, like height range as Michael of Venom Page. Um, he has a lot of tools. Let's just put it that way. He has a lot of tools. He can he can strike. He can kick. He can. He has a good exchange. Now the real question is: Is he fast enough for MVP? So everybody thought. A lot of people thought that. You know, being that MVP is older now, you know, he's not going to be that fast. Um, Kevin Holland actually mentioned this. I think he's saying this. I think I heard this somewhere or I heard it from MVP's interview where Kevin Holland was saying it in his corner. I think I remember this during the fight, too, but he was saying in the corner how MVP was actually faster than they thought. So I think it plays out the same way. The odds are not here, which... It'd be hard to even just say where this fight goes. Uh, but, I mean, MVP is so tricky. We've seen all his fights. He has insane, insane amount of highlights. So, he's just a tricky fighter. You don't know what he's going to do. You know, he has that style of kind of like just move in and strike and then move out. So, he's good at doing that. Now, the thing is, is Ian Gary's going to have to time that really, really well. So he's going to have to watch a lot of tape on him. I think Ian Gary grapples. I think he might try to grapple him a little bit in this fight. Because, you know, to slow MVP down, you're probably going to need to take some of his energy away. Frustrate him a little bit, you know. Hold on to him. You know, kind of make him, throw him off. Where, you know, you don't, you don't know if you're going to grab him or you're going to strike with him. So, I mean... I, I saw Ian talking to um, Charles Oliveira, so it, it could go that way. could go that way. There's a big possibility. I mean, if this stays standing, it's going to be an amazing striking fight. I don't think this... I don't, know if he, I don't know if MVP gets a KO or anything, or TKO. I think MVP wins this, though. I think MVP wins this. I actually want him to win this. I don't even like Ian Gary like that, to be honest. He's just a big mouth. I think somebody needs to shut him up. I think MVP gets it done. It's just gonna be a fun fight. I don't even know how this is actually, like this, like the I, I it's the opening card. It's the opening fight for the main card, which is cool. Um, I feel like it should have been higher up somewhere. I mean, yeah, I feel like it should have been like, I feel like Anthony Smith and Roman Delize should have been the actual opening. You know, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, 
in my opinion, I think this fight here goes for Michael Venom Page. I think Michael Venom Page gets it done. Pulls out a decision on this one. It's going to be another close one for Ian Gary. I don't think Ian Gary can put away MVP. At least I don't think he will. Puncher's chance always, but I don't think overall he's going to be able to do that. He just It's going to be so difficult for him to, to time MVP. I mean, it's been difficult for pretty much everybody. So Unless he gets like one of those Lima... You know, gets that Lima slip and punch and KOs, TKOs or KOs MVP, which, you know, that was a once, once in a lifetime type of thing that happened to him. So, I don't know. I don't see it happening again. I just see MVP winning in a decision. I don't think it's a TKO, but it'd be really, really damn cool if he knocks his ass out. Trust me, a lot of people would be happy. Alrighty, enough about these two. Um, let's move on to Myro Buena Silva and Macy. Uh, she lost her last fight. I do remember that. Um, she lost to Raquel Pennington for her title fight, which was, you know, she looked kind of crappy. I don't know. She got, she got smoked by Pennington. So it is what it is. She beat Holly Holm. Which is nice. Uh, but pretty much everybody's being Holly home nowadays. Um, yeah, I mean, Macy, I, I believe, um, yeah, she she fought Aldana. I do remember that. And I think that's, that's the only fight that I did watch of hers recently. I didn't actually watch. I mean, like, well, last fight. Now, did, did I watch the Aldana fight? I did watch the Aldana fight. I didn't watch this last fight. Um, which she did win by submission. Uh, she had a huge gap in between. Um, I think she's, she, did she have an injury? I'm not entirely sure on her situation, but, you know, I haven't been really following her. But this fight obviously goes to Myra Bueno Silva, her grappling, you know, super dynamic. She's, she's just going to likely case submit her. I think that's what everybody's going to be kind of looking at. Um, she, it's a big chance. That's kind of how the fight goes. I mean, there's not much to say about this fight. She was, she's fought like three times. Macy's fought like three times in like the past, what, three years? I mean, I don't know. But she'll be, she'll be fighting three times at this point in the last three years. So, or two years. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's going to be like a grappling match, I feel. I feel like it'll be a lot of grappling. Um, I mean, they both strike, but I feel like it's going to go to the ground and it's going to be a submission early somewhere. I don't know what round exactly, like what round to put it at, to my opinion, but it could be the first or second. Yeah, probably the first or second. So, yeah, we'll stick with that. Anyways, moving along. Um, oh, I meant to say Myra with submission. Now moving along, uh, Anthony Smith and Roman to so this, this actually, I don't know. This got switched around so much. It's kind of nuts. Um, it's been switched. I think he had, uh, Oberg before, and then it was Jamal Hill before it was round tree. I don't know what the hell happened. There's just a lot of people, man. There was just a lot of switching going on, but we're here today and this is where we're at. But against Roman, I mean, Roman's probably just going to grapple. I mean, that's that's what he's, you know, he's known for. He's really good with grappling. I mean, his last fight, he got kind of sparked. I do remember his last fight. And, um, you know, I don't know if he... I don't know if he... If he, if he wins by... Submission. I feel like maybe. I mean, Anthony Smith's a good submissioner. Like, I'm not gonna say, like he's a great, he's a great, well-rounded fighter. But he's also been on a shit streak too. Uh, I mean, he hasn't really had many wins in the last few outings. His uh, his last fight, obviously, he he won. But aside from that, he's been getting smoked by everybody else. So, you know, he's look like he he just lost. Oh, yeah, he beat Ryan Spann. I forgot about that. But that was just like, you know, he was he 
won that the, the second time around he won that not that impressively but against Ankalaev he lost he lost against Walker he lost against Roundtree beat Petrino so he's just like he's he's the kind of like a journeyman unfortunately I know he's trying to say he's gonna make a run for it but that 205 division my man I don't know buddy I don't think you get I don't think you get another crack at the belt sorry but she probably should have just took that knee and you know from Jones and took the belt maybe you would have been all right you could have ended up like Aljamain maybe made some real money but it is what it is nothing against Anthony Smith I don't, I'm not I don't really have anything against him um but I don't know I don't just don't see it where he walks out victorious in this even though it's a last minute swap I think Roman gets it done Yep, I'm gonna ride with Roman. I think Roman gets it done with a submission. Maybe he, or maybe just you know grinds him out to like the third round and just gets a decision. But I'm going with Roman on this, and yeah. Alrighty, another fight that I would have loved to make a video on: Brian Ortega and Diego Lopez. This is huge. This is basically Brian Ortega kind of doing what Dustin did for Benoit Saint Denis pretty much because Brian Ortega you know he's at the top of the game he's like but number two number three yeah number three against barely a ranked opponent uh who's also on a super tear which is you know amazing he's he's insane grappling but you know what what gets me frustrated is the fact that they just have him as a betting favorite like they just counted brian ortega out brian ortega got some of the nastiest freaking submissions so and his jiu-jitsu is like insanely on point the fact that everybody thinks that i feel like everybody's thinking that or assuming that diego lopez is going to go in there and walk right through brian ortega i don't think so i really don't think so i don't think he walks right through him I think there's a lot more to it than that. He's going to have to work for it like crazy, um, in my opinion. I think Brian Ortega, especially after his last outing, um, you know, he really showed heart. He showed that he can get it done. I don't know. I don't think the odds are being, f or at least whoever's making these goddamn odds are not unfair, fair to Ortega. Not counting all the shit that Ortega has done. And he's a dog. He's been in like some really dog fights. And he's pulled through some of those. And you know he's really. He's the real deal man. Um, so this is going to be interesting. This is going to be a very respectful fight. I'll tell you that much. There's no going to be no trash talking here. Ortega's a pretty respectful guy. Diego Lopez is a pretty respectful guy. So I don't see any trash talking going on here. But I don't know if Diego gets the win on this one. He is amazing. I don't doubt his abilities. I don't think he's the, I don't think he's a bad fighter. I think he's an amazing fighter. I just don't think he gets it done. Um, I think Brian Ortega wins this. I mean, after he beat Yair, at first I was like doubting him a little bit, but then after he took out Yair, I was like, yeah, he's the man for now. I think he can get it done. I think he just, you know, that injury sucked for him, but I think he gets it done. I think he could beat a lot of the top contenders in that division. And Diego Lopez is, you know, taking a big, big jump, which I think they're setting him up for like a title fight almost close to. Maybe after Max Holloway and Leo Taporia. But I think that Diego loses this one. I don't know if it's a submission, though. This could actually probably go all the way. But if there is any other way that this fight's going to be over with, it's probably going to be a submission because these guys both are dangerous. I'm going to ride with Brian Ortega. The fact that they got him as a plus 120 is some disrespectful ass shit. Um, I don't know what the hell's wrong with you guys. Come on, man. Anyways. The main event of the evening. Round two on this. Man, Pereira. I can't doubt the guy anymore, man. I mean, like. Shit, the way he took out Jamal Hill, um, he's beat Yuri before, he's also beat Jan Bahovic. This guy's been just so active. 
his striking is absolutely insane. He has nuclear hands. This guy could put away pretty much anybody. Pretty much anybody. And then, I mean, he hits harder than Francis Ngannou. So, I don't know. Yiri, I love Yiri. I, I'm actually rooting for Yiri, but realistically, I think Pereira gets it done. Um, but I would love for Yuri to win, man. Yuri's just, he's just weird. He's cool. He's, you know, he's a strange style of fighting, especially the last fight at outing he had against Rakic. And, you know, he was getting his legs kicked. And that's the part that was scary because if Rakic was doing that to him, Pereira's going to destroy his legs. And, but, you know, going back to your first fight, I don't know if it was that first outing. I feel like, you know, he had more left in him. It just stopped a little bit early, but that's just in my opinion on that. Obviously, you know, it is what it is. He still lost. This time around, it might be different. I feel like Yuri just has to be careful with the legs. I feel like if he gets a hold of him, fight can go many different ways. Um, Yuri has the power to put him out, though. Listen. Yuri has the power to put him out, but it's just that his weird ass style is the problem here. So it's hard to give him the against somebody who he lost already. It's hard to say that he's like, you know, to say that, you know, I have faith in him now, he's gonna win, and it's like hard. And then betting against somebody like Pereira, who's just been time after time proving everybody wrong. He's been whooping ass, finishing fights. I mean, how are you gonna bet against the guy? So it's hard to choose, but I'm going to have to go with Pereira. My heart wants Yuri to win, but it's going to go. I'm going to go with Pereira. I think Pereira gets it done. Probably another TKO at some point. It's going to be a TKO. The guy's just, he's been all over social media now too. And he's been training and, you know, showing all his new skills. I'm sure his grappling's got better. So I think he, I think he gets it done. TKO. Probably takes out his legs first and then finishes it with striking. That's my thoughts on this fight. <clears throat> I mean, do you guys see it any other way? Unless Yuri somehow does the Adesanya strike where he lands and just puts him out completely. I don't see it any other way. But yeah, that's my thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, who do you got for the main event? Who do you got for all the events that I put it, I talked about? Um, are you guys excited for this? Is this card better than what it was before? Because in my opinion, I feel like it might have been. I feel like it's actually better now. Um, I don't know about the Connor thing. The Connor thing was just whatever to me already. So I wasn't crazy about Connor to begin with because I feel like he was just, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I'm actually excited more about this than the Connor. I think this card is better. Let me know what you guys think about it, though. Um, hopefully, it's going to be a sick card. Like I said, 8.5. Hopefully, these are all going to bang your ass fights. Uh, but I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like this video. Also, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can see all the new videos I upload.